Kong Kong before destruction. I heard a guy say the other day, don't let your struggles become your identity. How true that is, especially when you're dealing with the issues of life. What's up, my good people? This your boy, CJ Moneyway. Welcome to the Moneyway Show. Thank you for tuning in to my first trailer. I have another trailer coming out September 29th, the week before my actual podcast come out and be launched. The first one going to be about my man, Michael Jordan. I know a lot of y'all Bull fans out there, you want to hear about Mike, so I'm going to talk about Michael Jordan, his career, why I think that he's the GOAT, although I'm a Laker fan, we're just going to put that out there like that, you'll hear more of that from me down the pipeline, but um, I'm going to talk about MJ, and then my first episode is going to be about the Alpha and the Omega, so I hope you tune in to that one, man, it's a good a good listen to, man, so this is what we're going to do on the Money Way Show. But starting right now, I just want to talk about. Um, I'm gonna do something. I want to do something different. That I probably I won't do this all the time, but it's in dedication to a friend of mine who's long gone. Man, he passed away uh, from COVID a couple years ago. So you know, we was working on a project. Uh, I was writing a book called Issues of Life. I came to my man's uh, Curtis Walton. You know, a great visionary man. He was a rapper. A gospel rapper, and I so said he was. He, I called him the Scarface of gospel rap, man. Dude, sound just like Scarface to me. But a lot of times we talk about how we want to keep people' memories up and keep people going, man. And we never do, you know. It just be talk sometimes, man. But you know, here's a man who actually he did my intros. He did my intro and my outro. You know, we was working on this project with uh, the issues of life, man. He had a different vision than what I what I had saw before, man. We was working on something. We was working on a soundtrack. We was going to do an Issues of Life soundtrack, man. And it, it was coming along pretty good. And then I kind of stalled on it, and so it stalled the project, man. But everything that I got from him and everything that we did together, you know, I'm going to put it out there, man. I'm going I'm to let the world know how talented this brother was, man. A loving father, a loving husband. Like I said, a great visionary, man. Dude had... He had vision beyond, man. He, he was working on a clothing line. We was going to do videos to this and everything. So anything that I got with me and him, I'm going to put it out there. Put it out there. I'm gonna, I ain't going to let it rest. That's been one of my most important things in life, man, that I wanted to keep I wanted to keep the movement going. I wanted to keep his name alive because that's how special he was to me. I had a chance to sit around and talk and chop it up a lot, man, actually. Y'all can go to my um, YouTube channel, man. I, I'm going to put some some stuff out there when we just used to be in sessions, man. And we was chopping it up about the whole project and how we was going to do this and how we was going to do that, man. So I'll give you behind the scenes look at that, which was pretty cool. I was doing that for behind the scene footage for my soul uh, to put out there. You know, people be doing and get a look at how, how all of this came about. But even if that don't come about, man, still, I'm, I'm going to put my man's stuff out there, man. He has some hot beats, so you might hear some, my, it ain't no mic. You're going to hear some soundtracks or some beats that's going to be in the background. A lot of it came from him. So uh, that's how we're going to do it, man. And this one, you know, Issues of Life, the soundtrack that we were starting off, man. And it was one of the uh, going to be one of the first tracks that came off. My man, I mean, my man, he was so talented with it, man. He had me on the mic thinking I can rap. So uh, check out this Issues of Life, man. For the most part, we all got issues. We all got problems. So that's what the money show going to be about. It's going to be about issues. It's going to be about problems, how we solve them, how we get through it. You're not the only one going through it. So that's what we going to do. That's what we going to talk about. Like I say, issues, man, it's, it's, it's more so where it can be up for debate or discussion. But how I'm saying it, we sitting around here, we discussing stuff. 
but we not we not discussing the right things. We not talking about the right things. We talking about things that don't even matter. We talking about people going right now as I'm doing this record, man. People talking about going to protest because Donald Trump fit to get arrested. This is what we talking about. We talking about having another insurrection. We talking about people being divided. We talking about people uh, not being united. It's lies on every side of the table. But this is what we debating and this is what we talking about. About our world, about our society going straight to hell. And ain't nobody really, we not even seeing the big picture. It's all about Democrats. It's all about Republicans. This side lying on this side. This side lying on this side. Ain't nobody really telling the truth. But see, here we are in the middle and we not even paying attention to what's going on. So either you on one side or the other. And so even if it's wrong, you still debating on that. So what are we really debating on? I don't get into, I hear people talk at work, man. I don't get into them conversations, bro. Because you one track mind. Let me clarify something real quick. Yes, I am a Democrat. Yes, I vote Democrat. Yes, I think I got Democratic v- views. Yes, I voted for Biden. Yes, I voted for Obama. Yes, I voted for Clinton. No, I did not vote for Trump. No, I'm not voting for Trump again. No, I'm not voting for DeSantis. I'm not voting for nobody that don't want to see me prosper, bruh. I'm not voting for somebody that don't want to see me grow. I'm not voting for somebody that don't want to see my children come up and be successful human beings, dog. I, I can't do it. I'm not doing it. I'm not caught up in the Trump world. I'm not caught up in the in the facet that he was uh, uh whatever that TV show was. I can't think about it right now. I'm not caught up in all that, man. I'm not caught up in the glitz and the glamour, bruh. Y'all better start thinking about something different, man. Y'all caught up in all that rhetoric. See, that's what we debating about. We debating about rhetoric, man. We we debating about stuff that don't even matter. Somebody tell me one thing that Trump said or Trump have done that sat here and make me want to just love Trump dirty draws, man. He has not did nothing for me to make me think that he really care about me, man. He ain't did he ain't did one policy that I've seen that set up there and said, oh, he trying to make black people the best of, the best that they can be. He ain't did it. Y'all set up there and got mad at Obama because Obama didn't give y'all reparations. So now y'all saying Obama didn't do nothing. Man, get out of here, man. We always pulling each other down, bro. We always pulling these. We like crabs in the barrel, bro. Always want to pull the next man down. Here it is. We had the first black president that any of us had ever seen, bro. Any of us had ever seen. They say it was some one back in the day. You didn't see him. I didn't see him. It's not verified that it's true. If it is, I don't know. But what I do know is that in 2008, I saw the first black president of the United States and I saw a black family in the White House. None of us had never seen that. Nobody ever wanted to see that. And here it is, we knocked him, we knocked him for what he didn't do, but didn't give him praise for what he did do. And so therefore, all y'all cats set up there was mad at Obama, and so now y'all want to run to Trump like Trump was the great white hope. Come on, man. Y'all better start... Back to my regular pro. You going to think what you want to think. You going to say what you want to say. But you ain't really looking at the big picture. It ain't no need for us going against each other. Because they say that a, 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 a house divided can't stand. And so here it is. We'd rather see other countries take credit and, and, and get accolades and things of this nature. Instead of sitting here and unite with ourselves, we'd rather sit back here and back backbite each other. We'll backbite each other just to see the other one fail so that everybody else can win. That don't make sense to me. And to me, that's an issue. That is definitely an issue of life. So when we gonna wake up, people? When we gonna wake up and see that that everybody is not for you? Not when they trying to take out uh, 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 things in the school. They trying to take out your history. They don't want nobody. To, they don't even want you to know about what your ancestors went through. They don't even want you to know that we even exist. They don't even want. They they they, they taking that. They want to take away Medicare. They want to take away Social Security. So some of y'all young cats that's twenty years old or so, they want to make y'all work until you die. They want to make you work until you die, bruh. They saying pe- people 20 years old, now y'all don't have to retire till you 70. And that's right. And that's just the limit right now what they saying. By the time you get to that age, they going to say that y'all can't retire till you're 80, until you're 90. 
How you going to enjoy your benefits, your Social Security benefits to retire when you 90 years old? Life expectancy is not that long, bro. Come on, man. We got to think about some things. People, man, my boy Tupac said it best, man. He said, they don't really about us. You might hear me say this a couple of times because the more and more I see things, the more and more I'm looking at how, how this world going, man, the more and more I'm seeing how people becoming divided. And if you want to sit here and tell me that racism don't exist, don't come holler at me, bro. I don't want to hear that. I see it. I see it all the time. You see it too. You just choose to ignore it. Because you want to think that some people are down for you. No, they not, bro. They want to put you in a box. I don't care what side you on. Whenever they come after one black person, whenever they come after a, 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 a black people as a whole, they coming after you too. They talking about you too. They want to put you in a box too, bro. They want to put you in the box too, Uncle Scott. Come on, man. Uncle Kanye. They want to put all y'all in the box. But y'all want to kumbaya with these cats like everything all good. No, it ain't. Kanye, look what they did to you, bro. Look what they did to you, bro. You thought you was on their level. You thought they loved you like that. You thought they was on your team. You want to run around with your mate, uh, 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 make America great, uh, great again head on and all that. But look what they did to you, bro. Look what they did to you. They, they let you know who you was, man. They let you know exactly who you were. A nobody to them. A clown. Yeah, I said it. He was a clown. I don't care. I might get some backlash and people talk about me. But these are issues, man. Y'all cats better wake up, man, and smell a coffee, man. Y'all better wake up and start realizing and seeing what's really going on before you. I don't care what you really uh, don't want to believe in, don't want to see, don't care about this, man. Y'all better start caring about something, man. Scarface told us that. He said, man, I'm believing in something because most of my homies don't believe in nothing. These are the issues of life. The issues of life. These are the issues of life. The issues of life. Look, man, do I watch reality TV? Yeah. I watch it with my wife from time to time. But you know what, man? We can't stage our life like they do, you know? We don't have the ability to stage our lives. And so what they do, they show us all this foolishness from week to week so we can keep tuning in. But you know what, man? I can't stage my life. Not when I'm being dealt with these issues every single day, dog. Let me jump on this real quick, man. Yes, I watch uh, A Housewives. Me and my wife, we watch Atlanta Housewives. We watch Love and Hip Hop Miami. We watch Love and Hip Hop New York. We watch Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. We watch all that. So, but my thing is, sometimes when you watching things, you watching it in a different view. I see things differently than how my wife see it. She see it differently than how I see it. But we watch it. Because that's our date night. That's time that we have dedicated to each other to watch shows. I had to compromise on certain things because there were certain things that I just wouldn't do. But I learned that as being married, as being a couple, you got to do things that you didn't that you wouldn't normally do. So you got to come outside your box. So okay, yeah, we watched the reality show. Put it that way. But, but here's my thing about that. You can't tell me that. You, you just can't sit here and tell me that you got all these beautiful women, all these educated business entrepreneurs, everything of that nature. You just can't sit here and tell me that this is how they live their lives outside of the TV show. You can't tell me that all they do is sit around and go around and drink and just act crazy and just cat fighting all the time and just arguing and bickering all the time. You can't tell me that, man. You just you just can't sit here and tell me that. That's why I say that they life is staged. They stage all this stuff so that we can sit back and keep tuning in, keep watching Candy in the Dungeon and uh, and her mom and them and, and everybody at, at the restaurant and see Cynthia get married. And I thought that was cool when Cynthia got married. I thought her and my man that do the sports, you know, I thought they was going to make it. But when you out that limelight, when you out the limelight, things change. Things change a little bit. 
I thought old girl, uh, the one who her husband died. You know, she she wanted to be the main thing. Sometimes when we get get so high up in life, man, we think that everything resolves around us. Just like old girl that was on uh, Love in New York with Stevie J. Uh, I can't think of her name right now. The, the 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 princess or whatever. She thought she was the show. Till they let her know, hey, you not the show. You can be replaced. And that's just how it is. Old girl Mona Love, she ain't playing with these cats. You can be replaced. Ray J and his old lady. I, I, I just can't I just can't believe that outside of the TV world, outside of the reality, what they trying to show us and what they trying to, to de- deliver to us and portray to us is that that this is just how they live, man. I, I, I just refuse to believe that. These people are too educated, they're too smart, they, they make it too much money, not even with the reality shows, but entrepreneur, Ray J, entrepreneur, uh, Trick Daddy, Trick Daddy cool, man, I, I ain't, I ain't going to even mess with Trick Daddy. I mean, to me, loving hip-hop Miami is the best one to me because, to me, they keep it more real. I mean, you got old boy real flamboyant or whatever, but to me, they, they, still, they still do things in a professional way, except for... Old girl got all the tattoos that want to be the rapper and don't wear no clothes, you know. But that's another story. But anyway, but I, I, I just refuse to believe that this is how they live outside of the reality show. But this is how they, how they tune us in. This is how they, they draw us in. This is what they want. We want to see, the, like I said earlier, just about, uh, about Trump. They want to see the rhetoric. They want to see the foolishness. And so we have gotten so accustomed to these type of activities. We got so accustomed to this type of movement with TV and, and, and all, this, all this crap and all this garbage, man, that this is all we want. This is all our kids want to look at on YouTube with the Muppets and all that type of crap, you know. So this is what we want. This is what we want to see. So they gear things towards what we, what we want to see. And I look at it because I'm looking at it differently. I'm looking at it totally differently. I'm looking at the buffoonery. I'm looking at the buffoonery that they have drawn us into, like married to medicine. You can't, you cannot make me believe that here it is, all these professional women and men, and that's a whole nother subject about the men, because in every reality show, whether you the doctor or whatever, the man the doctor, but Every man in every reality show, we all play the black, uh, the background. We all in the background. That's something to think about. We talk about that at another time, another day. We all play the background. Women up front, whether they the doctors, whether they the housewife, whether whatever the, whatever the case may be, the the man is in the background. So, but it is what it is. They getting the paycheck. They loving it. They like it. Hey, who am I to who am I to question how they live? But with Married to Medicine, all of them professionals. All of them got professional careers. You see, Dr. Jackie don't be acting no fool like that. She don't be clowning like that because she making money, money, money. And she ain't finna let nothing come between that dough that she making. So she ain't finna get up there and just act no complete fool out there. She not, she not finna do it. She not finna do it. Now, the rest of them, they'll get out there and show their butts every now and then. But... You know, just the reality thing, man. I just wanted to touch up on that because with 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 with, uh, with the agenda that I got going on, I don't see where I could have fit I could fit that in anywhere else. So I just had to go ahead and talk about that right now. said it like this. He say, every day I'm hustling. I'm going to say it like this. Every day I'm praying. Because the word tells me that he will put no more on me than I can bear. Issues included. Because I've experienced trouble on every side but wasn't crushed. I've been perplexed but not driven to despair. I've definitely been persecuted but not abandoned, dog. Been knocked down. Oh yeah. But not destroyed, man. Honestly though, we all hard pressed on every side. But man, as long as you still here today, you're not crushed. Man, we all perplexed. 
but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Man, you got people that you can go to. You got a mother or a father or a brother or a friend, somebody that you can talk to. So we not by ourselves. We been, you know what I'm saying? We not destroyed, man. We not destroyed. So quit looking at how your situation is right now and quit looking at yourself and start looking at the one who can bring you out of everything that you've ever been through. And just think about all the stuff that you have been through in your life. Just think about it. Think about all the times that you didn't know how you was going to make it out of this, how you was going to make it out of that. But some way, somehow, even if it, if it was in the 11th hour, you got through it. When you didn't think that you was going to get that job that, that you wanted. It might have took a year. It might have took two years. It might have took three years. It might have took four years. But it came. It came at the time that it was time for you to get it. Sometimes we want things in our lives. We want things right then and there because we look at it that right now I got a need. And my need is to make money. My need is to support my family. My need is to keep a roof over my head. My need is to have a car. My need is, you know, this, that, and the third. But at the same time, every, everything that we saying that we need, we already have. We're just not satisfied with what we have. We want more. Or we need more. And so, therefore, we get discouraged on certain things when things not going our way. We get discouraged when, when things not looking the way that we think that they should look, whether it's in a marriage, whether it's in a relationship, whether it's on your job. It don't matter. If, if it's not the way that you see it, you're not happy with it. It can be the best thing that didn't happen to you, but it's not the way that you viewed it. And so, therefore, it can take the, it can take the joy away from how he had blessed you to becoming dissatisfied with what's going on in your personal life. That's because you don't have that inner joy. That's because you don't see God in the midst of everything that you're doing. You don't see him working behind the scenes because you're too busy complaining about what's going on on the surface. Man, you got to start trusting in God and start believing that if I don't have it now, don't mean that I, don't, I, that I won't have it. It's just not happening right now. Man, let me tell you, I applied for the meal, U.S. Steel. I applied in, in Gary, Indiana. I applied for this meal, man, I would say about eight times. I got eight response left, eight of them, all saying that thank you for applying for the job. And pass the test. Now, pass the test every time. Pass the test every time. Pass the test every time. I'm talking about they was doing major hiring and this and that, and... Every time, bro, every time got denied, 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 denied. One time I, it, it got denied on the day me and some of my brothers, we was kicking it that night. We were fit to go have a men's meeting. We was having a men's gathering. And so I got the letter. I got the email that day. I was a little discouraged. I was a little discouraged. But here I am. Fit to go holler at the brothers and, and go be with the brothers. We fit to have man talk or whatever. How could I take my discouragement, something that I felt inside of me, over there to them? And then have them to feel discouraged. So no, I had to, I had to push that to the side. I had to let that go. Had to let that ride. Applied again. Same result. Man, I'm through it. I'm through applying for the meal. But I'm seeing everybody else making money. I'm seeing everybody else making moves. I want to make moves. I want to do this. I'm going to church every Sunday. I, 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 I'm serving in the church. I'm over the men's ministry. It, when is God going to begin blessing me? Don't, don't get me wrong now. You do have questions when you're going through some things in life. But at the same time, you got to keep your ten toes down to the ground, bro. Because if you're going to believe in what you believe in, then you got to stay strong in what you believe in. Regardless of how you may see it, don't mean that that's the way that it is. Because God can change some things and turn some things around with a blink of an eye. God time ain't our time. The Bible say that a thousand years is one day to God and ain't neither one of us going to see a thousand years, bro. So God time, God is not on our time, period. 
And once we begin to realize that God time ain't our time and that God that God don't move when we want him to move, he has already got plans on when he's going to move. He already know from today to tomorrow what you going to be, what I'm going to be, what's going to happen this day, what's going to happen that day. He already know. He already know when we're trying to figure it out. So when the Bible say, Put all your burdens, put all your cares upon me that I won't put more on you than you can bear. We have to believe that. But if you don't know that, if you ain't never seen that, if you ain't never heard that, then of course you couldn't stand on those principles. But today, after today, you can't say that you ain't never heard it. Now you can go search it for yourself. Now you can go read it for yourself and start standing on something more than, more than yourself. God is bigger than us, bro. God got bigger plans than we got. God got bigger ideas than we got. The Bible, the, 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 the old saying used to say, he got the whole world in his hands. The whole world in his hands. He sits high, man, and looks low. He see the good and the bad. God is omnipresent, man. So he know everything that you and I are going through. He know every situation that we ain't been in, and he know every situation that we gonna get out of. He know every situation that we gonna get in after today, and he know every situation that we gonna get in after tomorrow. And he already made an escape route for us to get out of each situation that we in. You just gotta believe in something, man. You just gotta believe in something bigger than yourself. You gotta believe in something bigger than your mom. You gotta believe in something bigger than your dad. You got to believe in something bigger than your wife or bigger than your husband. God is bigger than all of us, man. No, I don't. I can't have everything figured out. I don't have everything figured out. And so I got to a point where I stopped trying to figure things out. I'm going to let go. I'm, I'm going to let go. Like the song said, let go and let God. Straight up. Let go and let God. So here it is. My boy had told me, say, man, apply for such and such, such and such. Okay, I did it. Now, I had an interview with U.S. Steel. I had an interview with U.S. Steel. I'm waiting on U.S. Steel to call me back. I just know that I'm finna get in U.S. Steel. The other meal called me. Had went through, I'll tell you about this later on in some more episodes. Had went through some stuff. Boom. Now, I'm happy that the meal didn't call me, but I'm not as happy because I wish that it was U.S. Steel so I could be with some of my homies some of the people that I already know, I know that they they making big money over there. They getting these bonus checks and all this and that and the third. But then I had to realize, hey, that door was for them. God didn't open that door for me. He opened another door for me. And so I had to start being content and be happy with what he has given what he has given me. But it was a process, dog. It was a process. I went through some denials. I went through some rejections, but I didn't give up. I didn't give up. When I wanted it, it didn't come, but when I least expected it, they were. They was. They was, man. All I'm saying is quit, quit getting so down on yourself because things ain't going the way that you think that they should be going in this hour in your life right now. Go through whatever you're going through. It's a see. The Bible tells us it's a time for everything. It's a time for everything, bro. It's a time to go through some stuff. It's a time to get through some stuff. It's some time. To, it's a time to mourn. It's a time to cry. It's a time to laugh. It's a time for death. It's a time for sorrow. It's a time for everything, man. Ain't nothing new under the sun. Ain't nothing new under the sun. It's a time for everything. So quit letting the enemy defeat you in your mind. Like, uh, what's her name, Joyce, Joyce Myers? The battlefield of the mind, man. Go get that book and read it. Quit letting the enemy attack your mind, man, and make you think that God ain't who he is because God is more than who we think he is. God is everything. Hey, man, we dealing with real life right now. Yeah, life as it is lived in reality. Your reality, not no made-up or edited version. Involving unwelcome as well as welcome experiences, man. This is not a fictional world that we living in, bro. Real life is not a video game. This ain't no Fortnite or no GTA. 
where you can sit around here, have shootouts with the police, have heist, pull heist, and then run red lights, man, driving all reckless, and then get killed, and start all over again. No, dog, this ain't that. But it's sad to say, man, that a lot of us, too many of us today, man, we think that life is a game until it's over. And like I said in my last book, both eyes open and both eyes shut. You never know that you don't want to be in a place until you get to the place that you don't want to be. Many of us think and live a life that is leading us straight to hell, man. The book of Revelation, 20th chapter, the book of Revelation. Notice the 14th verse, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second day. Notice the 15th verse. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now whether you know it or not, these scriptures here are talking about hell. If you don't believe it, listen at me again. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. <laughs> This is the second day, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And our message tonight suggests a question. What in hell do you want? <laughs> to me, that's a pretty good question. What in hell do you want? But that's going to be continued.